So I'm going to go from this dumb trainer to apparently this smart Wahoo kicker trainer. The dumb trainer uses magnets in the flywheel or beside the flywheel, which you can't see because it's covered by this plastic cover. And depending on the resistance with this thumb wheel, you see the different resistance levels. It goes from one to six. The magnets end up getting closer and closer to the flywheel, putting resistance on that flywheel, making it harder. Even in the, the number six position, it's not that hard once you get moving. So I want more resistance so I can become a stronger, faster rider. The weight of this box is 47.8 pounds. So let's just call it 50 pounds. The box here is laying on its side. When you go to the store to pick this thing up, it does weigh 50 pounds. The code that they want to scan at the register is right there on the bottom of the box. So just be careful if you're trying to go putting it up on the counter for them to make it easier for them to scan because here it is on the bottom of the box. Okay, let's take it out of the box. Because it does weigh almost 50 pounds, probably not gonna get it out this way, so tip the box carefully, upside down, move the cardboard flaps out of the way, slowly put it on top, and slide it out. I haven't done this before, so I don't know how much of this is going to fall apart. Seems like it's well packaged. Lay it down on its side. Got one leg here. Looks like another leg over here. And the main unit, this is where all the weight is, is right here. Be careful it doesn't slip out of your hand if you're picking it up with the bag. Inside this thick styrofoam are two hidden compartments. Look at this. Power cord, an adapter, because it does need power. And what is in this other compartment? Here we have quick start guide and instructions, some other label, and quick connect skewer as well as some adapters spacers and the hardware for assembling the legs for the main unit well you know what let's start by assembling the legs to the main unit so putting this thing together shouldn't be too difficult it is four bolts with four nuts, four protective caps, these little black plastic pieces. They even give you a wrench, pretty cool. Here are the bolts, and they use self-locking nuts, which means once you tighten them up, they will not back off. So you wanna make sure that you don't over-tighten these things because you might crush and collapse the tubing. So, Let's put this thing together. Remember those two secret compartments? Here's one of the doors. You can use this piece of styrofoam to put under your knee. I'm on ceramic floor, so it's hard. Here we go. Short stand. It has kicker core written on it. Long leg also has a kicker core on it. It's not going to be that hard. Doesn't look like it. 
So to protect this sink, let's just do this, see how we go. Short one goes on the rear, closer to the flywheel. Okay, and when you put it on there, you want to put it in such a way, make sure it's not upside down, so that you see that sticker. Getting the bolts. Go in from underneath. Underneath the head of these bolts is a square, call them carriage bolts. This tubing has a square hole in it as well, so that when you put this bolt underneath or through it, the square shank underneath the head will fit into the square hole in the tubing and will prevent the screw from turning as you tighten up the nuts. in there pretty good. Get one of the self-locking nuts. <clears throat> self-locking nuts. When you look at the self-locking nut, at one end of the nut is shiny, just like the rest of it. But if you look at the other end, it has like a black circle up at the top. It's like a piece of nylon. That has to go to the top. If you try to put the black part in first onto that bolt, it won't screw. It'll screw into the nylon, it'll start to go, but it'll go cockeyed, it'll go crooked. Okay, so the nylon part must face you when you are installing this because it is the nylon part of this nut that locks it into place. Get your other two bolts. Put it in the hole, line it up to the other hole, and insert, and again, use those self-locking nuts that they supply. Okay, so they're assembled here. All we need to do now is tighten it up. Just push up the bolt with the finger, get this wrench, and start turning. Till it's snug. Do the other one, push the bolt up to make sure the square goes into the tubing, and that'll prevent the bolt from rotating as you are tightening up these nuts. You should tighten these nuts up to the point where the bolt is pretty much even with the top of the nut. You'll also feel a fair amount of resistance. Once you feel that fair amount of resistance, you know what, it's tight. Same with the other side. Push that bolt up. I'm going to tighten it up. Snug it up. Do the other one. This one here, you don't have as much clearance because the flywheel is in the way, but still there's plenty of clearance. They're both snug. Now we can tighten it up. Pretty much level with the top of the nut. Do the other side. Feels good and tight. And this side is also good and tight. Get your four plastic caps. Okay. And they just push over the nut. These are more for decorative purposes. And they will also protect the nut 
from sweat droppings to prevent the bolts and the nuts from rusting out. So this kit comes with different adapters for different wheels. This one here will do a 142 spacing, also a 148. I am not going to use that. It also comes with a 130, and the other end is a 135 spacing. This is the one I'm going to use. On my bike, it's 130. So I'm going to get that, I'm going to put it in the left side, and it just slips into place. And then there's this long adapter. It goes in, and now my spacing from here to here is going to be 130 millimeters. I can now get my bike, well before I do that actually, you see that there's no sprocket on here, so we need to put the cassette on here, because this Wahoo Kicker does not come with a cassette. So I either need to buy a new cassette, or take the cassette off my existing wheel. So since the store didn't have any cassettes, because they're low on stock on everything, I'll be taking the cassette off of my wheel and putting it on here. Okay, here's my cassette. This happens to be 1130. And as you know about cassettes, they come apart. And you're gonna have to line them up correctly with the splines on this hub here. So, don't forget these other pieces here, these last uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, they are individual and there are spacers in between them as well. I gotta put these on one by one now. The last two cogs don't have spacers, the spacers are built into the cogs. Remember, you always go from biggest to smallest. Line these suckers up. You need a special tool to put on this locking collar. Make sure it starts by hand easily first. And then you're gonna have to tighten it up. Gotta get a wrench. Okay, got the wrench. And I'm going to snug it up. You'll find that as this is a Shimano cassette, you'll find that as you tighten it up, it kind of bumps, it ratchets itself in there, right? And that is to prevent it from backing off. Okay. If you want, you can get a torque wrench and you can torque it and it should stay on there how much torque. My bad eyes, 40 Newton meters. Remember these adapters that we put into the Wahoo training unit? This one's gonna be used in pretty much all of them, as far as I know. I'm only concerning myself with my bike, but according to the instructions, it looks like this is used in all of them. It goes on the cassette side. On the left side of the trainer, you have to choose a correct one. If you don't know which size you have, so I know mine is a 130, so there's 130 etched onto this adapter. And I'm gonna put it so that 130 sticks out towards me, there it is. But if you don't know what size you need, get a tape measure, metric tape measure, and stick it in there and just put it across where the axle butts up against it, and sure enough, it is 130 millimeters. I got the right adapter. Now you know how to do it if you don't know which one yours is. Okay, so now we're ready to put the bike on the trainer. Let's do that. And put this on just as if you were putting on your wheel as if you got a flat on the road. Lining the dropouts with those two adapters that we put in there. It's now on there. They gave us a skewer, a quick release skewer, so you know what? We will use their quick release skewer. You could use your own skewer if you wanted to.
Make sure the bike is sitting on those adapters properly. So maybe a little bit of weight. There we go, nice and solid. The bike is now mounted. The next part here is to hook it up and then we should be good to go. Got to download an app, the Wahoo Kicker app, or you can use your Swift, Trainer Road, Ruby, whatever other apps are out there that will control the smart trainer. So they will change the resistance for you as you are training. Like what everybody says on YouTube, for this video, like and subscribe, it helps us out. Thank you.